just like I promised. So this is the sump here. This pipe here um, drains from the media grow bed. And this pipe here is draining from the um, trough for the deep water culture. Um, and then this is just a makeshift trickle. It's got like three layers of rocks. And it's separated by um, some graded uh, material that came from some barrels. Anyhow, so here's the pump. It comes up one inch. It's a Flowtech pump into a two inch pipe. And then this pipe will supply the fish tanks over there. So we'll walk there now. Okay, here we go. Sorry for the shakiness. All right, so the water comes up through here from the two inch pipe and then splits off into both, two, uh, both fish tanks right here. Got a couple of um, gate valves here. Go to the other side. Alrighty. Bear with me here, guys. Alright, let me come back here. Alright, so this used to be the original slows at the very, very top of the tank. And anytime I had any kind of. Um, uh, increase in fish height it would overflow a period um, and I would lose that water so now I put one down here so this is where the slow is and I have it towards the middle of the tank there I still need to I plan on replacing this and all this shade cloth I have it around the fish tanks with some picketing fencing to make it look better um, in the future wise these are going to be true emergency overflows and they'll drain back all right so this both of these guys have valves for each tank um, they tee together here they go down and into this two inch pipe here and then they go up and into this first static upflow filter there from there inside the middle of this tank there's a um, it goes about here, and then there is a, um, a 45 degree that kind of points it down here. The K2 media, um, when the barrel is completely empty, is at about here. And when it's full, uh, K2 media rises to about here. And then this is about the spot where they, the media um, ends. And then the rest of this is water, the most part, about this much. Not 100% sure how far down, but I know there's a gap in the bottom. At the very bottom of this tank, there's a air manifold, and we'll get to that here in a minute. <clears throat> yeah, here's the K2 media now. Nice little cover, easy. This is where it comes out of down into the next one same deal with this one and there's that one so this is the flow going into it and you can see it's not even overflowing it but it slowly trickles in and both these static upflow filters have the same exact flows um, uh, media guards And then it exits through here, comes over here, it tees off right here into the media grow bed, and then over into the trough. Okay, now for the clean out, come back on this side. These are the drains for the clean outs here and there. And then this is my bypass loop for to clean out one individual tank at a time. So I can close off a valve on each side of the tank and then open the ones that are next to it that'll make the water go around this tank so I can clean that guy. And then down here there's an airline tank, airline pipe which is connected to an airline manifold inside at the very bottom and that will boil the um, media to break up all the poop to drain it out 
and that's the same thing for both okay now they both drain from the bottom I do one at a time not, not, exact, not, not, not particularly the same day either and they'll drain into the first settling tank which has a elbow on the inside that points down about halfway down at least or more and then inside each one of these pipes this is just a straight pipe inside it's just open-ended I have some uh, sponge material let's see if we can take a look at that real quick that and it's stuffed into all the pipes this is an actual T so that's why you see that one coming up but yeah you can see all the sludge in there this one's actually has a net in it to try to help hold back some of the solids and so this is all filled with kind of like that green sponge material you saw inside here and then same thing here this one points down there's a little netting at the end of this pipe and then it goes into this one same thing points down and at the very top it overflows into this guy into this settling tank and then this one at my at my convenience or whenever I want to I just open up this valve and let the what should be clear water um, drain back into the sump and this is uh, what I call my overflow pipe it's uh, one it's a separate pipe uh, from the media bed and trough drains um, so there's a third pipe at the, at the sump you might have saw it over the uh, bucket the trickle bucket there um, and this one that one and that one they all connect to one pipe that goes down and over to the sump so these guys are just bottom of the IBC's just so if I want to partially drain one of these tanks for whatever reason catching fish whatever the reason may be if I'm overflowing and I need to just quickly drop the level in the fish tanks I just go into there um, so there's no buckets involved none of that stuff it's all through piping and through valves and of course it's all done manually now the vol all the valves are manual Maybe later on in the future, maybe I'll have some automatic valves on some timers. Um, all right, trough. Here's a trough. You can see that valve is nearly closed because it's the lowest point in the system, so it wants to get the majority of the water, and it's robbing all the water here. Hence, I need to get a bigger pump, which I already have on hand, but I need to take care of my settling tank first to prevent any more suspended solids from going into the sump and clogging up the filter faster than it should be causing my flows to go even slower so that's a work in progress so as of right now we have about maybe um, 380 I think 380 gallons per hour running through this tank this tanks about I, I believe roughly about a thousand gallons um, so it's about a little over three hours it turns this one I like to do a little quicker and there's no airline there's no um, here's my air tubing right here that's not connected it's just placed in the bottom all coupled together just waiting to put my topper rail all the way around this and not put that piping right on top of it or maybe just underneath it with some air valves going into all the all the air stones um, so for right now there's only two air stones there and then there is my pump house there that's for the air pump and I got one elemental pump in there this is the feed for the um, filter tank clean air manifolds and for now and in the future I'll probably hook up a, uh, some air stones into the actual fish tank itself and then this is the manifold I had prior I just just uh, put it over here uh, it's, and it's got two air stones going to the sump for now and two of these are on extensions over to the trough the ones for the trough again they're gonna be moved later this is just temporary but I sure I definitely want to add some more air stones to the sump since I am draining from the settling tanks which is anaerobic into the sump and I want to make sure that it gets gassed off really well before the sump sends it off to the fishes 
Um, this is that third pipe, that overflow pipe that I was telling you about earlier. This, will, this is where all the water comes in from the settling tanks. The emergency overflow will go here, and then any of the, um, the drains from the, um, from the uh, bottoms of the IBCs will go into there as well. Um, a quick look on the inside of the pump house. I don't have this on hinges yet, so bear with me. I gotta lift it out. Okay, this is the pump house. Um, I have enough room in there to put in two more pumps. And I already had electricity out here for the system that I put in um, early this year. So I just have a hole that I drilled at the bottom of the house there for the power cable. And if I end up having more than one device in here, then I'll just put a, um, a power strip and just connect everything else inside this uh, pump house. Um, in the future, I plan on doing a uh, battery backup system in the bottom here. Um, it'll be uh, a rack probably here, and then I'll enclose it partially as well. Uh, maybe some batteries and an inverter, and that'll be sometime in the future. I gotta make calculations to figure out how much power usage I'm using and what's the bare minimum that I need to run in order to keep the fish happy and the system alive for when the power comes back. Um, and quick look at the um, at the plants right now. These are my melons. These are melons right there. So a big hefty guy there. Um, and there's about three of those guys. One, there's two, there's three. There's four, there's five. Um, I am experiencing some sort of uh, deficiency here. I'm having some necrotic problems. Um, some more necrotic problems there. Here's under the leaf. I'm not sure exactly what it is. I haven't seen any worms. I did treat for, for caterpillars. Just in case, I haven't seen any. I don't see any aphids, nothing. So these are more older leaves. These are a little bit newer, but there's already black spots on them. And coming on up, these are brand new leaves here. Newer. So it seems like the older leaves are turning this dark brown color. There you go. The older leaves are turning like that, and then after some time, they just it gets it just falls off. Um, there's the mint. Mint always goes crazy. I don't. I can't. There's no way I can kill this guy. No matter how bad the water is, it's just always growing great. Um, there's the basil. Big flowering. Lots of seeds. Green onions, dill, leche, pineapple, some sort of squash that's been devastated by aphids. I try to control them, but my wife um, overplanted and thought that she can handle 27 squash plants, but it was just way too much, way too dense, too hard to control, and they're on their way out. Um, that pineapple tree there plant has been there has been on the aquaponic system for like three years and this year we finally got a uh, pineapple out of it um, that's all that's going on inside the um, at plant wise inside the system um, actually here's some culantro that's doing well and our first strawberry a set of three only one survived and I think it's because of the shade from the actual basil tree um, some oregano and then one last plant and that is the uh, the green peppers so here's the green peppers this is about as big as they get they never get any bigger um, this plant has been here for a long long time since the beginning of the aquaponics I believe and they just don't get big this is they're puny this is it, and they get bigger. So, uh, but it, it, just to be fair, here's more necrotic on these leaves. 
these are newer leaves and then the newer leaves so it's only in the older leaves that it gets like that so here's some nice leaves these are older ones but they don't have any spots here's an older one that's got some spots so I'm not a hundred percent sure what's causing this issue I've um, foliar sped, um, uh, sprayed um, potassium one day I saw no change I foliar sprayed some calcium, some iron, I mean I've tried everything and I'm not quite sure exactly what that is. And I've only given one dose, I haven't been too consistent, to be honest I haven't been all um, that too attentive on the plants, I've been um, uh, focusing on the upgrade of the system. Here's an avocado plant actually that I started from seed on the inside of the house and I transplanted it into the um, system and it's actually doing really really well. Obviously, I don't plan on keeping it here in the media bed. It's just uh, going to stay here long enough to get past the summer heat here, and then I'll transplant plant it into a uh, bigger pot or into the dirt directly when, it, when the time gets a little cooler so that it can have a better chance of surviving. So here's that um, melon again. Kind of excited about this melon. Okay, guys, that's it for this quick update. I'll see if I can have this posted up so you guys can look at it and help me out. See what you need, comments, suggestions. Post them down below. Don't forget to subscribe. Hopefully I'll be posting up more frequent videos. Hang in there, guys. And thanks for your support.